Our producer, Seplat and Brewer Guinness Nigeria have reported weaker earnings today. Joining me in the studio to discuss some of the numbers out is Kade uh, Akindele, partner at 46 Parallels. Kade, thank you very much for joining us. It hasn't been a great earnings season, but it was widely expected, right? So everyone knew that there was going to be pressure with the banks and many of the manufacturing companies. But let's start with Seplat. Your thoughts on what we've seen from them? Because what I'm hearing is that we're seeing even more pressure in the third quarter um, related to uh, disruptions in production. Yes, um, Saplat uh, announced that they had about 59 days of disruption in the first nine months, and 14 of those days were in Q3. Mm -hmm. I think going forward, there's going to be a significant issue for them on just, unless they address it. Right. I think if you look at, I mean, the positives from their show is that gas revenues are up, although it's still a small amount, only $17 million, but it's yeah. still up 24%. Um, crude oil revenues down, although the average price has been $109, which is something to look at. Right. But I think overall, given the good news story from the IPO, a lot of investors are now they take a second look at Seplat. Right. We were saying um, over $100 average for the first nine months, but we know that has changed clearly because now we're closer to 80. Um, your take on Seplat, is this still exciting? Is this a stock that you, you, you still want to allocate to, given the changes in the oil prices and, of course, the disruptions we've seen recently? Um, uh, uh, Seplat, it's... It, the outlook for Saplat is, is mixed from, from, our, from our point of view. I mean, we look at Saplat as an uh, indigenous operator. They've got significant blocks. They've shown significant, um, f significant experience in moving that block forward and yeah. increasing production. But then looking forward, you look at things like that pioneer tax status. With the yeah. oil price dropping to about $80, Nigeria's going to be looking for other revenue streams. And then I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Federal Inland Revenue Service starts looking at these pioneer tax status to give to a lot of these oil companies. Mm -hmm. So going forward, that might be something that will come under pressure after the elections. Right. So that's a big question mark for us. Right. And in terms of these disruptions on the Focardus line, it's been happening in the past. That's one of the reasons why Shell got out of the, get, got out of the, the OMLs. Yeah. So how can they address it? Are they going to be addressing going forward? That would be the big question. Right, it's still a tough business, especially with that lower oil price. Let's move to Guinness um, again, and that was no surprise either. We're seeing still pressure there, even though some people say there is some room for improvement when you when you analyze it a little bit. But your take on Guinness numbers? I'm um, Guinness numbers are weak, um, especially when you compare it to people like Nigerian breweries. They are weak. I mean, there's been a change in the MD. Whether that's because of the numbers, they announced a new MD and had probably a new strategy going forward. I mean, the good thing about Guinness is that they've done a lot of things in the last two to three years. Yeah. Expanded production, tried to bring in new brands, um, especially in the, because Guinness is quite a premium brand. It's trying to bring the middle income brand, um, new brands in. Now, it's going to take time for that to come through. Right. So hopefully going forward, they've built a platform which they can build from. Right. But they really have to attack um, issues such as high cost of funding, Nigerian banks, mm. um, the interest rate is just too high at the moment. Mm. Let's talk about the banks. FCMB, of course, is one of those that have reported recently. Your take on the numbers, because some people say that's a, a bank to watch, especially when you look at what they're doing with retail banking, that we may see some gains there further down the line. And of course, they just received some funding, very useful funding, $300 million. Yeah, I mean, uh, FCMB, the numbers were pretty in line with the rest of the market. Um, the, there's no big surprises there. I mean, going forward in Nigerian banking, uh, there's a lot of loan growth at the moment, and NPLs are creeping up. I think a big mm -hmm. question is going to be watching those NPLs, especially with the aggressive loan growth strategy of a lot of the banks. Mm. And looking at a lot of the banks entered the, tapped into the Eurobond market. Yeah. And TBM bought this new regulation and um, reducing from 200% to 75% of shareholders' funds. Right. Now that's going to affect a lot of the funding mixes the banks had. Now the banks like Zenith and GT and First Bank that went to Euro, tap the Eurobank, Eurobond market early, they're yes. okay. The guys who are trying to think about tapping it now, they're now starting looking at maybe local currency mm. and issues. Mm. And you may maybe suggest that CBN is looking at uh, potential pressure on the Naira right. and the fact that they don't want to have all these FX liabilities outstanding. Right. Uh, one thing that many people have been talking about recently, of course, has been political risk as, as we move closer to the elections. And today we know that President Gulag Jonathan is picking up that nomination form. Your take about how things are likely to move from here, because the opposition, it's now pretty clear, the, the, the three biggest candidates in the APC, eventually one will, will emerge. But what I think could be different about this election is that it could be quite, it, many people are saying it could be close. And I'm not sure a good close election is good for markets. Um, it's, it's not. I mean, um, markets like certainty. Mm. So uh, wh whichever the case, when there's a certain outcome, the markets can plan for it. I think but when you look at the opposition, um, Everyone knows that PDP kind is probably going to be the president, Absolutely. and that's going forward. Now, it depends on how, whether it's going to be close or not, depends on who the opposition pick. Because with the tribal, the ethnic, the religious things that happen, it depends on who they pick. Now, the three main candidates, Kwankoso, 
Buhari uh, Tiku, everyone's talking about. But people are also speculating that Tambua, who just um, moved yeah, over, speaker, yeah. spe the spe former speaker, is a potential because he's young, he's northern, and he seems to have m more of a national spread than some of the other candidates. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what, who they come up with. Yeah. But a close election is not good for the markets. Well, we'll be talking about that as we move on. Thank you so much, Kaldi Akindele, partner at 46 Parallels, giving us some perspective on the markets over here in Nigeria.